Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Hi, I'm Jan Dempsey. I'm owner of Poderi Erika Winery. We're located in Tuscany. And I started this winery 10 years ago. I had fallen in love with Italy, bought a house in the country. It came with vines, but it was terrible, the wine. So we decided to make good wine. If we're going to make wine, let's make a good wine. And I hired Marco, my winemaker, and the over time, we've developed some wonderful wines, and we have five different kinds of wines we offer. We also have donkeys and pigs and chickens, because we are completely biodynamic. What advice would you give to women? Advice to give to women is uh, hang in there, find some people that you trust that can help you break through the the blocks, roadblocks. Hello, I'm Frederica from Tenuta Terra Viva, a winery in Abruzzo. We are in the Colline Terramane area in front of the Adriatic Sea. The winery is in Tortoreto, from 100 to 200 meters above the sea level with mineral and clay soils, where we are working only with our indigenous grapes. So we have Trebbiano, Pecorino, Passerina for whites and Montepulciano for reds. My granddad started in 1970 buying some pieces of the land that we have now, certified organic since 1998, but our first production was in 2008, when we decided to vinify separately every different one-year plots. So today we have with us our Trebbiano, Pecorino, Cerasuolo and two different types of Montepulciano. Uh, when we harvest, the harvest is then picked in small boxes, so we choose the grapes that will be harvested and they are working immediately in the cellar. We have 25 hectares but under vines are 20 and we don't buy grapes or wines outside because we want that they represent the terroir that we have in Tortoreto. So we have the air from the sea that is in front of us that blows every day and at our back we have the Grand Sasso Mountains. So we used to have spontaneous fermentations and indigenous seas for every wine so our intervention is very low because we use only a little bit of sulfite some days before bottling. So the biggest challenge for us is to represent the terroir that we have around the world because we're not buying grapes or wines outside so we would like that our terroir can go everywhere and can be recognizable. Hello. This is Federica Pecorari. I'm coming from uh, Lisneris Winery in Friuli, Italy. Friuli is actually the region that is northeast uh, of Italy. We are right on the border with Slovenia. And this is where my family uh, has been doing this job for five generations now with me. Uh, we celebrated last year 140 years uh, of working in our uh, area, an area that is especially famous for the production of aromatic wines. Uh, we have uh, a terroir which is especially interesting for the production of these varietals, and the reason is simple. We managed to grant a lot of structure through the kind of soil that we have, which is very gravelly, and elegance uh, thanks to our climate, a climate which is characterized by this very interesting and constant wind which is called Bora, a very fast wind which manages to put down temperatures between day and night during the summer, even of more than 20 degrees sometimes. And this is where we've always been focusing on producing high quality wines with uh, um, focus on Pinot Grigio varietal. Pinot Grigio, in fact, is the main focus of our tasting today, and we also brought what we consider to be the wine of our heart, a wine that is called Gris, and wants to prove uh, the true aging potential and the true structure possible for a Pinot Grigio, which I encourage you to look for around. 
uh, being in my family uh, for uh, working in our business has always been very nice to me uh, with um, working with your parents working with the people that was there before you for a generation has always been uh, a very big push for me another big push is definitely the fact of being a woman in the wine world uh, more and more women are coming out and doing the job that I am doing and this is something which I find mostly interesting because when I started going around around uh, 20 years ago now uh, we were very few but I see that people is really starting to understand better our uh, potential our skills in this kind of business and I really enjoy seeing that we are being more and more uh, acclaimed and understood so I hope you will go and look for our Greece soon and I hope you're enjoying your day. Goodbye. Hi, hello. I'm Valeria Radicio Dero from Freccia Rossa. Freccia Rossa is the name of my winery. We are in Lombardia, Oltre Po Pavese. It's uh, the north of Italy and it's a part of Lombardy which is beyond the river Po, so it's called Oltre Po Pavese. It's a region where we work a lot with Pinot Noir and I have now Pinot Noir vinified in white and Pinot Noir red. And uh, I like to work also very much with our indigenous variety because I think that the territory has to express itself with his identity. So our identity is Croatina, Barbera and Uva Rara, which are the oldest uh, grape that were on our territory. I, um, our winery has 100 years this year and was found by my great-grandfather. Then my grandfather was the real vigneron who made all the wines. My mother worked there for a long time and now it's me. So we're very fair, two boys and two girls. And uh, being a woman in a uh, wine uh, business, wine world today, um, I think uh, that it's a good thing because uh, there are more and more women even though we are less than men. And, um, but there is a, 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 probably a different sensibility, you know, about uh, wine, about the way you take care of the, your vineyards. And um, there is also another way to communicate, you know, the wine, and even to communicate with men. And sometimes, uh, I think sometimes it's easier to be a woman in this, in this kind of uh, world, winemaking. Hello, my name is uh, Chiara Bona. Uh, the winery I'm representing is a family estate uh, named Marziano Bona. It's a family estate, once again, uh, which uh, is located in Piemonte, in the northwest of, uh, of Italy and in the um, very famous uh, region of uh, the Lange. We are based in a small uh, village which is called Dogliani, which is the homeland for uh, Dolcetto grapes. And uh, the flagship of the winery is this label, the Papa Celso. Papa Celso uh, is my grandfa was my grandfather and uh, the wine is entitled to him and we get this wine from wonderful 70 years old vines. Uh, we also produce Barbera, we produce also Barolo from uh, different uh, areas, so Novello and Monforte d'Alba and in uh, on tasting today we have the Barolo Ravera from the 2013 so being a woman in wine uh, uh, to me is uh, something which um, is, has been always part of my life. I decided to follow my father's path when I was just uh, three years old because I felt it very natural and because I love this, uh, um, this job, I love this business, I love this industry and I think uh, my region has uh, uh, generations with this passion and very deep roots so uh, it's a honor to be able to keep on my father's work and uh, the work of the past generation so uh, I can see year after year an increase of women in this business and in this industry and um, I think it's just the beginning of a very bright and fantastic future of women in wine. Hello. This is Paola Rosina of La Mesma Winery. So we own a small winery back in Piemonte, in Gavi. It's me and my two sisters. So it's a sister's winery, women only. And we are organic. So the good thing about it is that we are three sisters getting to work together. And honestly, I see more and more respect. So I'm really proud of that. 
And I think that in the wine world, the issue of being women is not as bad as it is in other, you know, in other things. So hi, I'm Alessandra and I work for Chiara Condello Winery. Um, I follow the, a little bit of production with Chiara, which is the owner, and uh, the sales. What I say to women is that it's really important to focus the, um, the attention to everything because the, um, the world of the winemaking is becoming always more female and this is good. But uh, don't forget that also what the, there is around is really important, like the um, terroir and everything. So work organic and everything by hand is really important. Hello, I'm Nicoletta from Sardinia, from the southern part of Sardinia, close to Cagliari area. And uh, we are in wine business from the 50s because my grandfather was the founder of the winery. And uh, we produce the traditional Sardinian grapes in 40 hectares divided in four properties where we produce the traditional Sardinian grapes. Vermentina and Canonau, of course, that are the most known all over the world. Then uh, Nuragus grape, Monica grape and others traditional just from the southern part of Sardinia. And uh, our idea is to make wines linked with the territory and uh, young and fresh like us because we are the youngest company in Sardinia. Um, to be a woman in the wine world is uh, a good thing because it's not so easy sometimes but I think that in the last 20 years a lot of women are fighting <laughs> to the right so we are in a fantastic world and every day we meet a lot of new people and also I think that the women taste is completely different compared to the uh, men's so women uh, um, and ladies and gentlemen need to be to cooperate uh, and to grow together i am giovanna bagnasco from agricola brandini i'm a winemaker and producer in uh, piemonte in barolo my winery is agricola brandini and uh, my advice for women is never give up because we can definitely do it all. I do a male job, but I'm very proud of it and we definitely have all the power to do it. So never give up, keep strong and uh, follow your dreams. Hello, I'm Diva Moretti Polegato from uh, Villa Sandi. We are located in the heart of uh, the Prosecco area in the province of Treviso. So I'm part of the family, I represent the third generation and I'm here today at the Trabicchieri in uh, New York, Gambro Rosso. My advice to women in this, uh, I would say, men world, the wine world, is be smart because uh, we have all the cards to play. Enjoy. Beautiful woman. And I want to tell you that great wines on the hill overlooking San Gimignano at Montenegro are for a foundation. We want old and young people speak about their lives, their future, and be connected around the world. And everything has to go into internet. So in the morning, instead of looking at the New York or to whatever is happening around, you can see what has been said at Montenegro among old and young people. That is the life, that is human life that is going on. And this is the best thing you can receive in the morning, a message of humanity, of love and friendship. Hi, my name is Martina. I'm the owner of Roeno Winery. We are located in the north of Italy. Uh, we produce Riesling, and our Riesling is three glasses by Gambro Rosso. We, today we also have Marzemino and Enanzio. They are two native grapes from North Italy. Um, what I want to say to women in uh, the wine, in the wine uh, markets, they have more uh, sensibility than men. Hi, I'm Nicole Vezzola from uh, Costa Rica. And I'm here with my family house and vineyards, representing the Valtenese Appellation on the Lake of Garda. We produce rosé wine because for us rosé is not a color but a real wine. And so I'm very pleased because uh, this year we won the Trebicchieri with the Molment 2016. And it's actually a preview, so it will be released in April. 
And I think this is the best way to express the potential of rosé wine. So let it age. What's the best value for a wine? Time, I guess. So that's why we let our rosé age. Uh, they've asked me like an advice for women in this industry. I think just be, just be who you are. If you have passionate, if you like this job, it doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy, it's just gonna be fine. Hi, I'm Erminia D'Angelo, the owner of um, Casa Vinicola D'Angelo, that is one of the historical winery in, uh, in Basilicata. Uh, we are located in the north part of Basilicata and we make uh, principally the Aglianico del Vulture, that is the typical grape uh, from Basilicata and one of the oldest grape uh, in, um, in Italy. Uh, we are a family winery, we are me and my brother that is the, the winemaker, because the winery was born in the 1920s, so now we are to the fourth generation. Um, I'm the um, export manager of the winery, so I travel a lot because we export the 85% of, uh, of our wines. So for me um, it's not easy because uh, I travel uh, every time, everywhere in the world and uh, I try the best, uh, to do the best to promote uh, the, the territory and uh, the wines. Hi there, my name is Lizanne van der Spee. Um, I'm the owner of Cape Point Vineyards in South Africa. Cape Point Vineyards is a family-run business, um, which is very much a female-driven business as well. We've got a fantastic female winemaker, Rehandri, um, and half of our team on the ground are actually women. So, yes, that's great. My advice to women in the industry would be to take the world by the horns. You've got the world as your oyster, you can do whatever you want. We can run circles around these men. Just go out there and do it, because you've got it all. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jessica from Bodegas El Inicio in Spain, in Rivera del Duero. Uh, we are here in our first time in Min Expo New York, trying to get an importer. Um, I'm the uh, chemist of the winery. Uh, it's a small winery, so we uh, ha we can we need to to do a, a lot of things uh, in it and li like sell wine. So I'm here to try to to sell our wines. And if you want to try it, please come and uh, let's see. Hi, my name is Carla Gonzalez. I am in charge of international sales and marketing for Mezcal Sentir, which is a company based in Mexico. It's my family's company. So we're a very small production, high care, into quality uh, company. Here is kind of like a quick overview of uh, the production process for Mezcal. Mezcal is a, I would say in general, a fairly young uh, spirit. It's a new market, so a lot of people aren't very familiar with it. I, a lot of people ask me what the difference between Mezcal and tequila is, and I always say there's two big differences. The first is that tequila can only be made with one kind of agave. Mezcal can be made, up, can be made with over 20 different kinds of agave. And then the second one, and the most important one, is the cooking process. Mezcal, the, the center of the plant is cut, and then it's put in an, right here, it's like a big underground oven, and it is slow cooked for a couple of days. So that gives mezcal its smoky flavor, and that's something that you're gonna find in all mezcals. But with our brand, we focus a lot on letting the plant kind of speak for itself, so it's not overly smoky. You really get a lot of different notes, a lot of different flavors, uh, and it's once you become familiar with the brand, you immediately know which uh, which bottle you are drinking. Like as soon as you smell it, because they are so distinct, and obviously in flavor, they're very distinct as well. I like to say there really is one. Uh, type of mezcal for every kind of person within the range that we have. Um, so we, in our own production, we use five different types of agave. We make six different kinds of young mezcals and then three different kinds of aged mezcals. And they just have a very distinct personality. That's what I like to say. They all have their own personality very, very clear. Um, 
I would say that advice I would give to women is that you shouldn't get discouraged because a lot of the time it feels like the system is built in a way that doesn't help us and you're gonna have to work harder than your male peers but you know what you're capable of and you know your value and that is really the most important thing and you just have to let that shine at the forefront and people will uh, especially when you're a young woman a lot of people won't really think much of what you're capable of but again you know what you're capable of you know who you are and that will be something that people will realize once you show it to them. Hi, I'm Francesca, I'm from Italy, from Vigna Petrusa, northeast of uh, Italy, Friuli Venezia Giulia. We produce, uh, is a family and female business. Uh, we are wine producer, me and my mom, was a family business run by my grandmother at the beginning. Uh, we um, uh, produce a very good wine and we put a lot of care and a lot of passion in what we are doing. And uh, the we, it's the first time that we are in New York and we are very excited uh, to be at this uh, event. And um, it's been very hard to be a woman producer and uh, but never give up and uh, you always get uh, a different touch uh, and a female taste uh, on what you do. My favorite is Picolit, was the uh, old, uh, very old wine, very popular uh, between the Osborgic uh, um, family, so on the Queens, on the court, it was very popular, and uh, is a 50 years old uh, vineyard, and there is a strong selection of the grapes, and uh, is my favorite because when I was young, I was when my parents were not looking at me, I was going with my friends to try to taste with the uh, uh, with a pumpet, uh, with a thief uh, pumpet, uh, um, to steal this uh, wine, and because it was so sweet and so intense uh, that we really loved it. Jane Lello, proprietor of Stella Kaya Wines, Stellenbosch, South Africa. Stella Kaya, we started 21 years ago out of sheer passion for wine and food. We produce premium reds uh, within the Golden Triangle of Stellenbosch. Women, well, I say, if this is possible, anything's possible, but even better so with women. Uh, I think there's an intrinsic uh, element that wine can be well associated with women um, and enables us to do so much, uh, traverse around the world, share the wares of not only our country, but the product that we produce, enable us to be powerful in a very male-dominated environment. But we've got to be determined and we've got to stick together. Cheers. Hi, I'm Gail Corrigan. And I'm Linda Dykeman. We're the co-founders of Saparavi USA. So Saparavi USA is a premier importer of Saparavi wines. Uh, we deal with nine wines from the wine company Shumi. And we are both co-founders of Saparavi USA, uh, an importer and distributor in the state of Rhode Island. And it was really important for us to form this business together. Uh, we've been working together for a few years and it's taken about three years to get to this point and have our first show here at Vin Expo and show everyone the wines that we've been working with for behind the scenes for over three years now. We're very proud uh, to be women owned and we feel it's very important to share the entrepreneurial spirit with other women. In fact, we do teach a class on entrepreneurship to women that have been challenged um, and haven't been able to finish college so we've been working with that uh, every week we have our students meet us and work with our wines and they've been helping us promote the wines so we're very proud to be women owned and here at Vin Expo and hoping for a very product productive couple of days. Thank you and the last message we'd like to say to women entrepreneurs if we can do it so can you. Follow your dreams. Hi, my name is Lana Toller, and I work for the Spearhead Group. I'm really excited because I get to design packaging for the spirits and wine industry. Anything from bottles to closures to labels, premium boxes are my favorite. Also being able to think about how to engage customers with brands and be able to give them an experience that they can share with other people. 
really excited also to see the progression of the amount of women in this field and the science and design and packaging and be able to help each other move through this industry and be able to take on bigger and bigger roles within this category. So looking forward to seeing you out there. Thank you. Hi, I'm Margaret Ebeling and I'm the owner of Nordic Distillers. We are the producers of Kringle Cream. You might wonder, what is a Kringle? It is a real pastry from Wisconsin. We actually love pastry so much, we named it our official state pastry. So we made a rum cream liqueur in its honor. So think of this, real Wisconsin dairy cream, Puerto Rican rum and natural Kringle flavor, nothing artificial and completely gluten-free. So yes, you can have a gluten-free pastry and it's delicious. Pour it over the rocks, put it with coffee, just everywhere you want to go, be sure to share it with friends. We did, however, just last week launch a new product. We brought it here just in time for the show today called Kringle Cream Latte. Cold brew coffee and Kringle Cream together in a ready-to-drink can. 187 milliliters can go anywhere you want to go with it. So here's what I'm going to tell you. As a woman owner in the spirits industry, anybody can do it. All the women out there, I'm going to tell you what, this is a boys game, but we're about to take it by storm and it's going to start right here with Kringle Cream. So join us, let's have some fun, let's have some Kringle together.